Hello everyone, Karina here. I was literally just playing World of Warcraft when I got the notification that Bellular had this video with this title and I got really curious because I'm currently working on a Nelloon video and I just decided to go ahead and, and watch this. Um, previously I said I didn't really want big spoilers, but you got me with this title. I'm gonna go ahead and just start watching it and I'll comment my thoughts and feelings during and or after, so. Let's go. Next, Alune. it is a loon. Ah. Patch 9.1 brings with it her reveal. So will it be satisfying? Well, we don't know quite yet, but I will say this. There's actually big potential here. Between the Night Warrior stuff and Battle for Azeroth, and a few things in Shadowlands, I think we knew we were going to be getting some big loon lore. The first hint of this, of course, came during the Night Fae campaign, and this is when the Winter Queen actually called Yazera her sister's pet. Which I have yeah, lots of comments pet. on that. Initial theories pointed to both Elun and Aenar, the Titan, yes. being this sister of the Winter Queen. But recent reveals have confirmed that it is, in fact, Elun. The implications Tell me are the massive, reveal. so let's go into the details. If it's the a tier of a loon story, thing, I'm gonna just... A long one, I'll do it short. We travel with Huln High Mountain to gather other night warriors who have found themselves in the Shadowlands. And of course, we do all of this to see if we can work out how to save Tyrande. And that's because in every case thus far, becoming the night warrior, the avatar of a loon's fury, has left the host rather dead. I and love we don't the want cinematic. this to happen to Tyrande. So, we... The three night warriors, Yazera, Huln, Chandris, and the Winter Queen, all try to save Tyrande in a ritual. Chandris holds her oh, down, I got and each night warrior is then amazed at the scope, the breadth, the intensity of Tyrande's rage. And just as it seems that that rage is going to be cataclysmically explosive, a cutscene plays. We have not yet seen it. Okay. The oh dialogue my God, I can't afterwards wait for the is scene. revealing. Chandris could barely believe what she saw. And neither could Tyrande, even though it was playing out through her person. Tyrande claimed that she was present for every moment that occurred, but that she was outside herself. Chandris commented on the beauty and the sorrow in her voice and of the tear left behind, a tear that Tyrande says is as much her own as it was hers. Who is her? Well, that tear, by the way, is a tear of a loon. Yes, just like the Pillar of Creation from Legion. And it certainly was a loon, because when Chandris asked Tyrande about the purpose of their people's souls, Tyrande revealed that a loon didn't tell her. And Tyrande said a loon. So overall, I think it's pretty damn clear that a loon has made her first ever appearance directly. And that Tyrande was in fact her avatar. That Elune's words came out through Tyrande's lips, all while she was watching it unfold, feeling outside of herself. It's rather incredible, big stuff, isn't it? The first Night Warrior to survive, there's that. And I think more importantly, our first direct interaction with Elune. Elune has spoken words to us, but that is Ooh, far new words. from all we <laughs> learned. This is what this the Winter make any Queen sense, had though. to say afterwards. My sister, after all this time, she did not abandon me. And then the game emotes. The barest hint of a smile graces the Winter Queen's face before it is gone. She turns her attention to you with the weight of aeons. Now there is so much, so much to unpack here. This is hard confirmation that a loon is the Winter Queen's sister. Makes no sense. That's big. It does, but it, it doesn't. It is confirmation that but it does, but abandoned it doesn't. the Winter Queen. <laughs> and that means that at some point they felt close and then became rather estranged. And with this line, we actually know Elune's origin. Elune is not a Light Lord, not a Rogue Void Lord, not a Titan, an Eternal. The Eternal Ones, the Pantheon of Death that we know. Denathrius, the Primus, the Archon, the Winter Queen. They all refer to each other as siblings. And we now I have, have two so very many comments right now. Like where the Winter Queen has 
like like the eternal ones aren't even like actually physic not physically but they don't actually interact with other worlds i mean why would they their realm is a shadow land so maybe and this is one of the things that i go into my video that i won't i'll try not to go really in depth here right now but like uh, maybe that's why Elune uh, and the Winter Queen, they uh, they had a dispute because Elune was like, we need to be more interactive with these people. And the rest of them was like, no, why? <laughs> I don't know. But then she has a lot of connections with like nature and light and kind of void. So it's just, I don't know. They, they make her seem like a big deity. Elune, her sister. And this brings up really big questions. Like the other Eternals, did Elune have an original purpose? Something she was meant to do as a part of the First One's plan? Was she supposed to be a part of the Shadowlands? Perhaps of a Lifelands? Do the First Ones have other Eternals scattered throughout the cosmos? Is there a Lifelands with its yeah. pantheon so of life? Yeah, so there's actually... Uh, referring to what he said, said there's actually, and I'll try to insert a clip somewhere in here, but there's actually this uh, deity in Ardenweald in the Queen's Conservatory. He says that there are multiple major beings. I can't, and I'm paraphrasing here, but he says that there's multiple major beings, but four or four of them are the main ones um, or have the most power. Um, so I wonder maybe then if they're hinting at the possibility that there's more eternal ones. Same way that we've got the material plane and its pantheon of order. Well, let's sort this thing out, starting with an old friend. A remnant of power lingers in this broken temple. It must be ours. Come, enter the circle and take it. <laughs> My mistake. It seems the upstart goddess still holds sway here. Oh well. This is played when the blade-wielding priest attempted to absorb Elune's power in the Temple of Elune back in patch 7.2. It doesn't go well, the priest almost dies. Uh -huh. But the point, of course, is Elune being referred to as upstart goddess. Now combine this with what we just found out from the Winter Queen and I think it's all becoming rather clear. Elune obviously rejected her lot in life and decided to take to the stars doing what she felt was right. In a way, that's what Zoval did, just that Zoval likely betrayed his kin in a far more direct and painful way, and likely did just getting emotional banishment. out of what he said. Now, you do have to <laughs> wonder here why Blizzard are going so hard on this Elune lore right now. You know, why we've got this event of Toronto being stripped of her night warrior powers. I have to wonder, could it be that a loon is our patch 9.2 reveal? Is that a part of what defeats Zoval? A loon finally returning to her people, to That'd her place, be her plane? It's hard to say, but Ian has a coast as did say the patch 9.2 story was going to be mind bending and explosive. You know, that the end of the raid would be incredible. But of course, that's not got too far ahead of ourselves because we have so much to work out. Exactly. Thank you. Alone has been working with Order, the Tears of Alone. Where have we seen that before? Of course, Legion. It was a pillar of creation. It was used to fight disorder. It was also used to order the planet. Mm -hmm. So yes, that is a direct link between Alone and the Titans, and it's one that goes way back because yes, those Tears of Elune were used in ancient times to order the planets. Mm -hmm. It was in fact Elune who taught the Kaldori much, including Titan forged words, potentially even the word Azeroth. And Her acts spanned well beyond Azeroth though. Khadgar of course discovered an ancient tome indicating that Elune created the Prime mm -hmm. Naru. And later in the Zira. Legion expansion, a Tear of Elune is used to awaken Zira. Now that we, of course, know the Tears of Elune are from Elune and not Aenar, that makes complete sense. It makes the Elune to Light connection even more clear, for it was her tear that was able to reawaken one of her creations in Zira. Going cosmic, Elune has got confirmed worshippers everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have met night warriors from other worlds. And interestingly, they all call her Elune as well. Mm -hmm. So, like with Azeroth, could she have taken a personal interest in other races and worlds across the cosmos? 
Maybe even as personally as she did with Azeroth, like, say, birthing Cenarius, a wild god who embodies his mother's boundless love for life, and of course his father, Malorn's Malorn. magical connection to the Emerald Dream. You do have to wonder, will Blizzard make there be a life lance with a pantheon of life, and will they bring in another connection there? Of course then, just look at the Kaldori culture. It is split between the priestesses of Elun and, and the, the druids. druids of the Emerald Dream. It's a society entirely geared towards the balance and the protection of life and nature. And that is a pattern that likely reflects Elune's ultimate Why ambition I get so to protect <laughs> and to cherish the life of the cosmos itself, of ev life mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Could this pattern be seen elsewhere then? Well, beyond this, we know that Aenar hid from the Legion on a In world Elunaria. called Elunaria. Now, we've got that data point. And the other one, that the Tears of Elun was Aenar's Pillar of Creation. Because there was a Pillar of Creation for every Titan. Except the Hammer her. of Kazgroth, mm -hmm. the Eye of Amunthul. We didn't have the Tears of Aenar, it was the Tears of Elun. And because of the Tears of Elun being Aenar's Pillar, and Aenar hiding out in Elunaria, I think we can assume that Aenar and Elun are especially well acquainted. Mm -hmm. It's kind of odd that that information has been kept from us. I know. But there are more odd things. There is a massive mystery to unfold. Because, like, this is, like, literally everything that I had organized already. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, to, to make a video myself, and he's just like, here's basically everything. Elune's role in the light is downright confusing. So we know that the Void Lords are the ultimate villain, in a way, or at least we thought, and that they are stuck outside of creation. They're unable to manifest themselves in our universe. Love that clip. If they wanted to do that, well, one of their old god creations would have to corrupt Azeroth and use that power. Now, we also know that the Light and the Void are opposites, but more in the way that they are sides of a coin. And that makes sense because we know that a Naru can turn from its mm -hmm. Light state into its Void state. And vice versa. Oh shit, Elune created the Naru. The Naru that can go void if they get interfered with. Double oh shit, <laughs> this is what Zalatath had to say about them. I know the Naru consider us horrors to be resisted. We do not share this view. They are merely beloved brethren that lost the true path. They will return to their masters in time. Right. Elun created the Void's long-lost brethren, the Naru. You know, that bunch that, usually when mortals interfere with them, as Locust Walker remarked upon, uh, they turn into a state of Void. And as seen in the Legion Priest campaign, they can even turn into a Void God, a very powerful entity of the Void. Now, Elune has been seen as a moon goddess, and that stuff that's very much rooted in our literal planet Earth and its moon, its culture, we of course have a tidally locked moon that's got a light side and a dark side. Her creation, the Naru, have a light side and a dark side. Mm -hmm. For Elune herself, we have seen both the serene goddess and the rage-fueled vengeful warrior. warrior. Uh. A light side and a dark side. Something went down here. There is another aspect to Elune. Because we see all of this beauty, this wonder, this protection of life, and then we see the sheer fury and rage and destruction of the Night Warrior persona. There is more to Elune than just the Serene Moon Goddess. Something went down here, and it went down long, long ago. And we have absolutely no idea what it could be. But clearly, Elune has got deep ties to the strongest forces in Warcraft. Hell, those Naru that she created even went on to invade Revendreth, mm -hmm. to invade the realm of her brother. Of course, Denathrius' Nathrazim had infiltrated the light, so the light went scorched earth. Now, by this stage, the Stone Rite, who actually was the first Night Warrior, well, she had died. So, an ex Night Warrior defended Revendreth from Elune's creation, the Naru, who were trying to fight Elune's brother. So the Light, the Naru, probably knew what Denathrius was up to. But of course, Elun, did she? Did she not? We do not know. We cannot know at this stage. 
I mean, even though the Naru, they, they were fighting Denathrius, who, of course, by that stage, had uh, turned against the other Eternals, as he, of course, had secretly allied himself with Zovel, the Jailer. Confusing, isn't it? Very. <laughs> There's a lot going on here, more than we know right now. Aluna's been clearly involved with a lot here, and very little of this stuff is stuff that we understand solidly. Mm -hmm. Now that said, I think there are some solid conclusions that we can draw. So let's do that. It's time to bring this all together and see where we stand with Elun. Elun was created by the First Ones. The grand ordering, the creation of the fundamentals of the cosmos. The creation of the forces and the systems that would set up and sustain everything we see. This happened at or before the creation of the cosmos as we know it. And like with the other Eternal Ones, she would have had a purpose. Though, she's an upstart goddess, so she clearly turned on her purpose. She turned her back on what she was meant to do, and she abandoned her siblings, the other Eternal Ones. She probably left because she saw how hostile the cosmos was, and had a boundless love for life that she needed to protect. She, I think, then traveled the cosmos and protected life wherever it appeared. Personally, interacting with civilizations, religions being formed around her, and expanding the influence of, in my opinion, the lifelands. Of course, what we think of as the Emerald Dream, I believe, is but a realm of the lifelands. This is a self-imposed mission that brought her into opposition with disorder, void, and death, of course, via the Jailer. And in response, she allied with the forces of order and of life. I then think that she created the Prime Naru to give light form, to give light the form and the sentience that it would need to help in this cosmic struggle. So she worked with the Titans, helping to order world souls and protect the life that thrived in the surface of those worlds. She worked with the light, creating the Prime Naru and perhaps directing that Prime Naru force against the Nathrezim in the Shadowlands, depending on what she knew or not. She established a relationship with life, as we see expressed with her interactions with the Emerald Dream. Elune, ultimately is an expert in cosmic warfare, in the grand game being played between all the various forces. We had previously speculated that Elun was in fact some sort of omni-god, one who really stood above all, above the titans, literally the thing that the whole cosmic chart fed into. I think we were wrong. But in a way, what we got's not that far off, because she does remain an incredibly powerful, godlike figure. You know, she started off like the Winter Queen, but who knows how much more powerful she is now. But, while the whole universe doesn't feed into her or something like that, we do see her have this massive cosmos spanning influence, right? Mm -hmm. All towards her own goal. And we don't know exactly what that goal is yet, but all signs do seem to point towards Elune having our back as we take our next big step in the increasingly strange cosmic journey through the Warcraft universe. Though I'd still really like to know why she, um, you know, aided a few individual characters in the War of Thorns, but ultimately let Talrasil burn. And really what the goal for all those Night Elf souls is, because clearly Tyrande and Chandris are wondering, we are too. So I sure hope Elune didn't let that tree burn when she could have otherwise made it not be so. Mm -hmm. And that is it. I think, for I think I would love to know that. His theory, I think it's probably like the best theory. And if Blizzard doesn't do something like this or similar to this, I think they're missing out on, on a potential extremely well-written character. Um, I just, it's just... I choked up. <laughs> I choked up because the description is just like this ideal goddess and, and, and that connection that you as a being can build with your deity. Like that's like, that's what you ask for. You know that they care and simbolucre. What's that word that I'm looking for? That they inter, not intervene, but they, they put themselves out there and the, the, so that they, they, they helped 
they're beings who adore and love the deity so much and it's just i feel like they would be missing they would blizzard would be missing the mark if they don't do anything close to this um i think that this is probably the best i don't know if it can, if it can be a conclusion just yet i wouldn't necessarily call it a conclusion i think this would be a, a speculation of basically everything put together um nothing has been confirmed or affirmed by blizzard but if blizzard doesn't take the initiative to do something like this i'm just gonna call this canon in my head i'm gonna call this canon in my head because if this is the story the trajectory that this dd had like that is incredibly inspiring like that's probably why illidan is my favorite character because he opposed what people thought was nor normal normalcy what people thought was normal he went and fought fire with fire and he was not afraid of being different of being a, a mischief and getting the job done uh, to protect those he loves and the world ultimately so i think that blizzard would be i think that blizzard would be doing a big mistake if they don't do something like this um i think we need our goddess to be this beautiful and amazing deity now i'm not necessarily saying that i would like to see a model in game um i think the fact that she's that she's mysterious um and ethereal and cosmic i think that that would be the concept that i would like the most um just like with um just like with deities in real life i really like the archetypal energy that deities portray i don't necessarily stick with one vision of what a deity looks like um i personally have my own what we call popantheon which obviously revolves like uh, around night elves um so i don't necessarily adhere to real life examples of how people think a deity looks so the fa if if uh, elune is kept in this ethereal cosmic um being i think that would be fantastic i think it would play really well with like real life connections and i would encourage blizzard to go nice and slow because mythology is awesome and some things are best not left explained exactly that is it for me <laughs> all of his points are exactly what i was writing <laughs> which is crazy i do have everything written down on my google documents um i i do i was studying and making sure that what i was saying was actually backed up because i do love references um but this is it this is it right here this really just uh portrays my 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 thoughts and my feelings but yeah one of the things that i wrote when i was trying to make my own video was in order to understand if elune and explore if elune was the winter queen's sister was that maybe they did start at this death death pantheon uh, tier um, as an eternal one but then the reason as to why the the winter queen was upset with Elun and they hadn't talked for eons was because Elun actually wanted to be present and wanted to intervene and help the denizens of the other worlds and uh, really the eternal ones they don't really necessarily have to or should interact with the life um portion of of the world because that is not their place obviously that is not their purpose um which also the purpose in oribos i would love to know more about that because it's just it's it's really interesting and strange another another thing that i did write was the memory of aonar i think is what it's called basically like it says aonar so it you know like people were between aonar of Elune, like they might be the same dd but yeah, essentially, as I said, I was doing research and the more I was, I was very determined to prove that Aonar was the sister and Elune was not the sister. But the more that I did research, the more confused I was and the more I thought, what if? What if Elune is the Winter Queen's sister? What if she is this uh, eternal one who, like Belular said, made her own purpose in in life as a deity and made herself an a goddess by intervening in these other worlds this is i think this is exactly the video that i needed to confirm the fact that i didn't just do all this research to be like well shit i don't know <laughs> so this this helps me to understand and and i guess make a better connection of 
how big Elune is when it comes to the fact that she's with connected with order and nature nature and light and void um and yeah this is this is exactly my thoughts my feelings better explained <laughs> by valuler and yeah honestly props props to this research because it was really it was it was really good um I'm biased because this is one I want it to be but <laughs> I think this is really good honestly I think that's it um I don't I don't I don't think I'll make my own video because this is it. This is exactly what I was going to say. My thoughts and feelings, I've just shared them with you. So let's, <laughs> that's it. Leave a comment down below. Tell me if you agree with this theory, if you like this theory, if you think Aonar should be the sister and why so. Um, if you want to refute some ideas or thoughts and opinions that me or Belular just shared, leave a link. Uh, put references and back up what you, what you say. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.